Hey there friends, it's Mark from the Angular team back again bringing you the latest updates from the Angular v16 launch. Angular's momentum is real, and we've been hard at work creating the best developer experience possible for you, the fantastic Angular community. We have a lot of features to discuss, so let's get to it. First up, I hope your components are thirsty because the team has just released a developer preview for non-destructive hydration with server-side rendering. That's right, long gone are the days of your Angular apps having to re-render the server render DOM when your app gets to the browser. With this feature being in developer preview, you can try it right now. Here's how. For standalone apps, add a call to provide client hydration to the providers list in the Bootstrap application configuration. And if you are using ng modules, add a call to provide client hydration to the providers list in the app's main module. Remember, this is a developer preview and there will be some features we haven't implemented just yet. Be sure to check out the release notes and Angular release blog for more details. Links in the description of this video. Next, let's discuss recent updates to Angular's reactivity model. Up to this point, we've relied solely on change detection power by Zone.js, but over time, we found that at scale, it isn't the optimal solution. Now, we spent a lot of time trying to figure out a better way, and you know what? We think we found one, Angular Signals. If you haven't heard of Signals before, that's totally fine because we got you covered. Signals have three core concepts that we call reactive primitives, signal, computed, and effect. A signal is like a variable and holds a value that can change. Unlike variables, signals can notify Angular when they change. A computed is a kind of signal that calculates its value from other signals and only updates if the value it depends on change. Then we have effects. Effects are functions that execute when the values of the signals they use change. And this gives developers the opportunity to respond to changes in a meaningful way. And now the biggest question, when can we use them? Right now. We just launched in developer preview and we're going to link some helpful docs and Q and A's with the developers where you can find more information. And remember, as with all developer previews, things are likely to change over time as we continue building out this feature set. Remember last year when we introduced standalone APIs for components, directives, and pipes, allowing developers to have optional modules and everybody loved it? Well, get ready to love it more because we're introducing some awesome upgrades. You may have wanted to migrate existing applications to use standalone APIs. Well, we've got something for that scenario. Say hello to the new standalone migration schematics. Now you can migrate your applications all at once or by path using the new schematic. To get started, run ng generate at angular forward slash core colon standalone in your project. But we didn't stop there. You can now generate applications that are configured to use standalone APIs from the start. That's right, no need to manually convert your app code to bootstrapping a component and removing modules. It's all handled for you with the new standalone command line option for ng-new. Routing is a vital part of nearly every app out there, so we've decided to make it a bit better for everyone. You've asked to be able to bind parameters to a component's inputs. All right, you got it. In v16, you can now define properties to map to inputs in the resolve configuration for your routes. You can pass resolver and data properties path parameters, and even query parameters. Very cool stuff. Let's turn our attention to updates around developer tooling. We have a crisp new developer preview of our ESBuild-based build system. Furthermore, we're using Vite for the development server of ng-serve. Now, this is only for dev servers. To enable Vite in ESBuild, head over to angular.json to configure this feature. We'll include instructions in the description to this video. Surveys and community feedback tell us that Jet Support is high on the wish list for Angular devs. Well, today we're happy to announce that we're enabling experimental support for Jest and v16. Details on how you can try out this new experimental feature can be found in the links in the description. Here's another feature that we've received a lot of requests for. The community has been asking for required inputs for a while, and we are happy to announce that components now support required inputs. 
to mark an input as required, add the required flag to the input decorator's configuration, and you are ready to use this new feature. Okay, honestly, there are too many features to cover in just this update, so it's time for a lightning round. By default, new projects will start with fewer files, and we've added a schematic to generate your environments file if you need it. The Angular language service can now autocomplete imports in templates. The ng undestroyed lifecycle hook is now injectable, and it provides you with more flexibility in registering cleanup logic for your app. And while Angular has always been compatible with the vast majority of content security policy settings, we've just added stricter style source CSP support across our packages to allow developers to specify a nonce attribute for component styles at Angular inline. And can you believe that there are even more updates in this release? To learn more, check out the official Angular release blog at goo.gle forward slash angular v16. All right, everyone, Angular v16 is out now with some fantastic updates that we think you are really going to love. Be sure to ng update today to take advantage of all of these great features. Thanks for watching and go build great apps.